Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, Mike'sInventions.com. We're still talking about how to build the fastest cardboard boat. In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate center of buoyancy for fairly simple shapes. We're going to start with the simplest of all shape, a rectangular tub. This is what most boats are anyway, so we're going to start with that and it'll at least get you started in thinking about other things. We're going to do more complex shapes uh, in a different video. So, if we look at a boat from the end, center of buoyancy, like I mentioned in another video, is going to simply be in the center of your imaginary water line. If you were to draw an X, just like find the center of any rectangular shape, center of buoyancy is going to be at the intersection of there. Well, that's great, but how do you know where there is? You have to know your draft. Uh, draft is the distance from the bottom of the keel to the water line. Draft varies with the weight. The dimensions of this of your boat at this point are fixed. You know what the uh, what the area is. You know what the height is. So you know what its maximum displacement should be. So, but draft is going to vary. And so, with a prism, luckily your center of buoyancy is going to be exactly half your draft, assuming you have a totally symmetric boat. If you look at it from the side, if it looks like this, then center of buoyancy is also going to be in the center right here too. So you're good. So to calculate the draft. What we're going to do is this. We're going to assume, let's assume a base case. Let's say you had a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood. We'll say plywood. Actually, the cardboard that I use comes in 4 by 8 sheets too, so we're going to go ahead and assume that. So you have 4 feet by 8 feet. Obviously, your surface area there is 32 square feet. We're going to go ahead and assume that it has sufficient height, because this is part of the great calculation here, is to figure out how tall you need to build your boat at a bare minimum so that you have enough freeboard. Freeboard is the distance from the top of your deck to the water line. And that's an important safety factor. So, to make sure that we have enough freeboard, uh, we need to first calculate what our draft is going to be under normal conditions, and then we can add a little bit whatever we feel like beyond that to make sure that, you know, waves and stuff don't come crashing over. So, if we have 32 square feet, uh, going back to the example I provided earlier of 150 pounds, we can calculate real quickly uh, what our draft should be. We know that water, uh, fresh water in this case, is 62.4 pounds, we're going to call it 63 pounds per cubic foot. So uh, we know this, we know this, we simply divide that out, and remember it was 2.4 cubic feet. 2.4. When you displace 2.4 cubic feet, well, we know that we have an area of 32. So, all we do is get out our calculator here. We'll do 32 divided by 2, excuse me, cubic feet back to square feet. We're, get, we're looking for one dimension here. All we're looking for is, this is cubic, this is square, so we want one dimension, just linear feet. So we're going to divide 2.4 divided by 32, and we're going to get 0 0.075. So we need 0 0.075 feet um, times, well, because obviously that's a meaningless number in feet. We need 0.9 inches. Let's call that one inch. One inch. So if we were to build a boat, flat bottom boat out of a piece of plywood or whatever, 4x8, 150 pounds would have a draft of slightly less than one inch is all. That is absurd. So, I mean, gosh, you could build a boat that's... Now, I wouldn't build one with a one inch wall. I'd go ahead and build a three or four inch wall just to be safe, and then, gosh, you could pack three or four hundred pounds in that thing. Easy. So, now that we know what our draft is going to be, uh, we're going to go ahead and say that it's going to be an inch. We know exactly then where our center of buoyancy is. In our example, if this is the, this is the thing right here, that's going to be 8. That's 4, looking from the end. Center of buoyancy is, my goodness, it's only a half inch off the keel. So, that's how we do center of buoyancy for simple shapes like that. What's great about this is center of buoyancy is really no different than a centroid problem. The centroid, remember, is just the center of where all the stuff can be considered to be concentrated. Um, and it's just like center of gravity. We do, we find the simple shapes, and I'll show you here, I guess, 
uh, how we're going to find centroids. So in case you don't know how to do that, I'll show you how we're going to do that because we're going to need it for this stuff extensively. But hope this gets you started. I'm going to go ahead now. Uh, we're going to do a separate video or maybe just tack on to the end of this one. We're going to do slightly more complicated shapes. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.